Hello and welcome to Eye on South Asia. I'm Bhavna Vannan. And I'm Sunil Hali. Every week we'll discuss the latest news, events, and all the happenings with South Asians in North America. All right, let's start with our first story of this week. It's quite a firecracker with Jay Leno. It certainly is, but before that, welcome back. I hope your India trip was great. Oh, yes, it was wonderful. Um, yeah. Two weeks is not enough for visiting India. It's, it's almost... never enough. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, our Oprah is in India and she's enjoying every bit of it. She mm -hmm. thinks uh, it's a great country. Right. And a uh, great show on earth, she calls it. Mm -hmm. So obviously she's enjoying it too. Definitely. So coming back to the stories of this week, Bhavna, we had a very unfortunate back-to-back -back, uh, two incidents, um, Jay Leno. Uh, the um, show host, otherwise very liked, but, uh, you know, he was very indiscreet in his comments. Mm -hmm. And here he's touching the most sacred institution for Indians, and in particularly Punjabi Sikh community, mm -hmm. which is the Golden Temple Gurdwara, which right. is the highest and most sacred religious institution for this community in Punjab. Mm -hmm. and, and what what he had said in his show was, you know, I mean, this is the time when everyone's talking about the presidential election campaigns, you know, poking fun back and forth. And he was referring to Mitt Romney and how, you know, his summer vacation home is the Golden Temple, you know. Right. This is absolutely nonsensical mm -hmm. statement. It is a absolutely indiscreet comment to be made. It is hurting Bhavna, you have to see how people respect this institution. You know, we have uh, almost, I would say, uh, 300 uh, or 30 million, uh, sorry, 30 million Sikhs in the world today, and they are extremely offended by these comments. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Randeep Dillon from California has filed a lawsuit against him. Right. And he says that it has hurt the sentiments of all Sikh people in addition to those of the plaintiff, which is himself. And I can tell you, it's not just the Sikh community, it is the Hindu community, it is a certain other sub-ethnic communities in India, everybody. I mean, I personally, I'll tell you, I have the highest respect for this institution. Mm -hmm. And this is not acceptable. Right. Because, I mean, as South Asians, we're we're all coexisting, you know, whether it's in the U.S. community or back in India, you know, we're respectful of each other's religions. And when it comes sure. to, you know, religious attack or anything like that, you know, it just comes back down to this issue of race. You know? And this is not the first time he has spoken like this because in 2007, he went after, again, Sikh community at that time and then mm -hmm. uh, called them, I think, something like diaper heads. Right. Because they have a particular turban, which yeah. we covered again last week, is now one of the best things for the Sikh community's victory. Mm -hmm. And he referred to them as diaper heads. Mm -hmm. Indian government has taken it very, very seriously and they have filed a, comp you know, uh, they have filed a complaint through the ambassador's office, who is up uh, taking it up with the... Um, the state government mm -hmm. and um, there was also a demonstration in front of NBC who mm -hmm. is the parent channel who broadcast this show right and uh, six for justice Gur Patwan Pannu who is always heading such type of um, issues to represent his community has filed a complaint against uh, this uh, this statement to FCC mm -hmm. and it's very 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 serious while I think uh, it seems um, the response from the US authorities is not very very encouraging they think it is still uh, you know part of uh, right to speech right free speech they're saying and they're terming his comments as part of his satire and part of his art, you know, and this just shows like the complete discrepancy of seriousness, you know, we're viewing this as extremely, you know, insulting and just derogatory remarks and on the other end, it's seen as, you know, mere comedy, really. No, it is certainly not and it has highly offended every Indian 
all over the world. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And not uh, this, Bhavana didn't stop at that. We have our own vice president who is otherwise a very highly respected uh, um, person and especially in the foreign relations because he has been the head of the foreign relations committee and that was one of the reasons that uh, President Obama picked him up as a vice presidential candidate for him. Mm -hmm. He has made a statement um, after making one similar statement few years ago when he talked about people in Dunkin Donuts. He said, if you have to walk into a Dunkin Donuts, you have to probably have some kind of an accent to be able to deal with them. Mm -hmm. And you know what he was pointing at because Dunkin Donuts is He's majority He's referring to the Indian Indians. accent. They right. own lots of Dunkin Donuts and uh, it was as an offense and mm -hmm. he said the same thing for Dunkin Donuts, something for the 7-Eleven. Mm -hmm. And now during his speech in New Hampshire, he was kind of discussing about what President Obama in his State of the Union address mentioned about outsourcing and stopping of the outsourcing or putting high level of taxes to the companies who are going to outsource. Mm -hmm. But he spoke in a foreign accent and you can very easily make out that's like an Indian accent. Right. And he's talking specifically about the call center jobs, right? And, yeah. um, you know, it's it's very obvious, you know, what what they're trying to pull and it's and this is the vice president of america he's not a, a stand-up comedian or a show right. host it's that's definitely not a platform for any sort of especially you know racial or ethnic kind of comedy to be taking place at exactly all. Uh, we talked about last week uh, again on the state of the union address from president obama while he's trying to get inward this in election year and uh, trying to kind of preserve, conserve the jobs in America. Um, the immediate announcement came from India, mm -hmm. uh, from the president of HCL, which is Hindustan's Computers Limited, and the chairman of also Mahindra, Mahindra Satya, Vineet Nair, made the announcement that they will create 10,000 jobs mm -hmm. in next 10 years in US and in Europe. Mm -hmm. which is excellent statement right so he said we're not only be looking at uh, you know um, uh, taking the money away from the western countries mm -hmm. and jobs away we're going to create these jobs and 10,000 jobs in five years I'm sorry five years is not a small mean task from one company mm -hmm. it's a big statement to be made right. and um, Prime Minister David Cameron has been very categorical and appreciative of this that we need to open up relationships with India. And he talks about the free trade agreement which has been pending uh, and he expects that to be opened up which is the European uh, free trade agreement. He wants to be concluding that so that India and European relationships can go through a different flight. Mm -hmm. um, and this is proposing that, you know, uh, economies like the European ones which are struggling right now. Which is um, typically the Western countries. Right. And they're going to be, you know, benefited by this sort of partnership. And like you said, it's not just stealing jobs away anymore. No. It's it's a partnership. So we're creating jobs here overseas in the Western countries where Indian firms, when they come here, they're looking to build a base here as well. It's, you know? it's, a, it's a true cyclical process or actually it is a loop which is getting completed now. U.S. has a huge advantages in terms of infrastructure, in, in fact, because of the technology and whatnot, and they were outsourcing these jobs to India, where there is a technological manpower available. And now, the India is reversing the trend and bringing jobs into America. This is how this whole thing will be completely looped, and right. nobody will be losing because of it, but mm -hmm. they have to be patient. And since this happens to be an election year, and jobs is the biggest issue in the short term, Mm -hmm. uh, they are looking at cutting it. And uh, Azim Premji, who is a very frank talker, mm -hmm. and he is the uh, head of Wipro, he said, uh, since the elections are coming up, the U.S. has become oversensitive on jobs, mm -hmm. which is what is the case here. Right. And um, I think uh, even uh, the Citigroup chief, which is Vikram Pandit, has said the job creation is the single biggest issue. Mm -hmm. And he says that we will be looking for 400 million jobs around the world in the next 10 years to be created. And IT industry, India, is almost getting about $60 billion of a revenue from US, mm -hmm. so which is huge. Right. And uh, he actually mentions 400 million, while ILO, which is the International Labor Organization, says there is a need to create 500 million jobs, right. which is huge. And I think... Um, 
this kind of attitude to be very inwardly because of political reasons is not a good move. Mm -hmm. We definitely have to open up and be more open-minded in terms of how to get any sorts of jobs into this country that's you know good for the long term and sustainable. Look, ILO has clearly stated that despite the strenuous government efforts, the jobs crisis has continued mm -hmm. in at least last decade, I would say. Right. And uh, there are an estimated 1.1 billion people, which is almost like 20% of the people all over the world are unemployed or poverty in poverty, mm -hmm. which is a serious issue. Definitely. So that's why it's very important the world to come together. Mm -hmm. And then there will be a redistribution or even distribution of uh, the financial um, um, resources and the wealth. And that's how the world will come to a common happiness platform. Exactly. Uh, now about the Obama's calls for immigration reform. And uh, he has, <coughs> uh, this is where he is very positive. He wants to talk about giving an early or quick citizenship making pathway for highly skilled professionals or entrepreneurs who are investing in this country mm -hmm. to start businesses where they will invest company obviously create jobs and opportunities for new new uh, new uh, generation he has mentioned that we should make it easier for them the immigration so that they can get their green card or citizenship faster mm -hmm. because right now there is an issue and uh, he feels that by expelling the responsible young people who want to staff our labs, start new businesses or defend this country should be given a priority. Right. And as we all know, uh, because of this, uh, the pending bill, which is called the HR 3012 High Skilled Immigration Act, is trying to look into this. Again, right now, this is a, um, every country has a percentage quota, which is total countries, and divide by that country. So every country is almost like six to seven percent of the quota mm -hmm. of the intake. Now a large country or a capable professional producing country like India and China should have a higher percentage. Right. While a small country out of Africa or even South America may not have it's even not close. generating as many people. So the idea is let's make it first come first serve basis mm -hmm. and open up the country for opportunities and uh, let uh, the uh, you know the um, uh, the people who are making a difference to this country or its economy or its future and strengthening it should be given the immigration right and the same representation has been made by silicon valley's uh, what we call the valley based global indian technology professional association and they have made the same statement this is an important step in the effort to reform immigration policy in response to the changing global situation. Right. Because they realize what this talent is going to do for this country. Mm -hmm. That's definitely the best way to go. Uh, uh, we had uh, a very interesting meet in India, which was organized by the George Washington University Sigur Center for Asian Studies. And um, this is about the what they call the new American security. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they are talking about that, you know, they, there is a threat to our national security. And uh, in reality, we, this, this convention or this conference concluded the biggest threat to our national security is our own selves. And very important lawmaker in India, Manishankar Iyer, said this openly at this conference. He said, the, uh, we are continuing to live with the illusion that we are a global power and we aspire to become bigger and bigger and uh, um, are in some kind of endanger. But if we stick to our tradition about what the foreign policy should be, which is give up the dominance. You know, everybody, even a small fry wants to dominate mm -hmm. their own neighbors. Right. I don't know what, what are they going to get by uh, dominating their neighbor? Because mm -hmm. in the end, this is not the whole goal. He says the if there are issues, then we have to deal with them through diplomacy and not through dominance. Right. And thus, individual countries are actually an enemy of themselves and they try to dominate the region and to prove their superiority. Mm -hmm. At least India is not certainly amongst one of those countries because we are a very friendly country to all of our nations. Exactly. And set an and example to that. You know? Right. Well, so, we're going to have to hold that thought right there, but we'll be right back with more stories on Eye on South Asia.